Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au. This is the second learning object for my starting point for flipped learning workshop at FlipCon Australia 2017. And in this particular learning object, I want to talk about why you should be flipping. There are two real reasons that I want to talk about. The first one is relationships, and by that I mean student-teacher relationships. And the second one, which feeds on from relationships, is the pedagogy. Now, relationships are massively important. I don't think that's particularly controversial. Now, I'm sure we're familiar with uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We can't do too much for students' physiological needs. That really lies with the parents. But where we can have a huge impact is in making students feel safe, in making sure that they feel like they belong in our classroom, and in helping them to build up their self-esteem in positive ways. Self-actualization, that will come as a role of those three things if there is also the physiological uh, need has been met, but we can really have a significant impact on those three areas of Maslow's hierarchy. And that's borne out in the research as well. The research indicates that it's the positive student-teacher relationships that help students feel safe and secure in their learning environments. And if they feel safe and secure, the rest of it can then flow on from that. Because it's then students in those safe and secure learning environments who see positive impacts on their social and their academic learning outcomes. So it really does come from making students feel safe. Now, had he found that the student-teacher relationships is actually a bigger indicator on student learning outcomes than their students' socioeconomic status, teacher professional development, or reading recovery programs. It is also, I don't think, particularly revelatory to say that the research indicates that it's the low-income students who particularly benefit from positive relationships. This is often because it's our low SES students who come from not so great home backgrounds. Their home lives aren't particularly great. And I'm sure we've all got a student in mind uh, when we read that, that there's a student that we know that they don't have a good home life. But it's our relationship with that student that can build that student up to the point where they can then go on to see success in whatever form they that success looks like for that student. Let's be a little bit more positive now. Let's talk about the pedagogy. I'm sure that we're all familiar with Bloom's taxonomy and the way that we are told or implied that we should be spending as much time as possible towards the top of the pyramid as opposed to down the bottom. The unfortunate thing is that research looking at over 2 million classrooms found that 58% of those classes and those lessons were actually focused on interacting with new content, which is the bottom two levels. We're told we should be at the top, but in reality, we're down the bottom. It's not where we should be. So what this means is that we have a situation where the group learning space is spent on understanding and remembering. Less difficulty. The individual learning space is spent on applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating, where there's more difficulty. The problem with that is that in the group learning space, that's where we can, as teachers, that's where we can provide the help the students need. But that's where the easy stuff is. The individual learning space, where the hard stuff is, that's where we're not, and we can't do anything for the students necessarily in that space. Now, if we just flip Bloom's taxonomy, we end up with this, and if you think about the ramifications of that, you'll fairly quickly realize that that's a PhD. Now, I have high expectations of my students, but my students will never reach a PhD while they're my students. I teach you one and two. Think about Bloom's taxonomy like this. It still has all of the same layers, it just reorganizes the focus. We're often told that we should be spending more time having our students do things with the skills and the concepts that we're trying to teach, apply and analyze. Less time, the drill and skill, remember and understand. So this is what we can look at. This means that we've got less difficulty in the individual learning space, but less help because we need less help in the individual learning space. It's the bottom two levels of blooms. It means that in the group learning space, where we're doing the more challenging learning activities, it's more difficult, but that's okay because they're in the classroom and we as the teacher can provide that extra help that the students need. The diamond version of Bloom's taxonomy is the one that I think that we should be focusing on more when we talk about Bloom's in general. And this is where flipped learning comes in because it allows us to put this implementation, this concept of Bloom as a diamond into practice. So I would ask you, leave you with this question. What is the most effective use of your face-to-face -face time with students and why do you want to flip your classroom. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the workshop.